Hello, and welcome to uh, another Canon on the Couch, proudly supported by Canon Australia. Tonight, we have a very special guest, uh, a sports photographer, uh, a portrait photographer for, with over 30 years experience. Um, we've got Phil Hill Hilliard joining us tonight. Now, Phil, thanks for joining us. Thanks I for hear, having me on, Jackson. My pleasure. I, I hear you've had a very busy day. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Uh, there has been a bit going on. Um, and the re retirement announcement of a legend of the footy club at the Sydney Swans, Josh Kennedy, is going to pull the pin at the end of the season. And yeah, he's had an amazing career. So yeah, it was a busy afternoon. Um, yeah, wow. Lovely to catch up with his family and record some pictures. That's that's massive. So that's a bit of a, a breaking news story as we we join, which is pretty uh, pretty wild for an on the couch episode. Now, what what does that sort of what does that sort of entail? Do you you go back now after this interview and start editing photos and get stuck in, or no? That was done, um, you know, to get them out sort of quickly for publications, but also yep. so I could make it make it here for six o'clock, six thirty to yep. catch up with you. You've done very well. You've done very well. Now, uh, Phil, start if if you can. Can you break? Break down how you got into photography in general. How, how, how did it start for you? Um, I guess, you know, I was a sport lover as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, funny because I watch my son now and he's exactly the same. He's just absolutely loves his all sport. Um, yep. And, you know, we all Sportsman we yourself, gonna... Phil? Well, I did play most sports, yeah. Yep. Um, and, you know, you dreamed big and thought you might um, go to the high level, but I kind of just worked out at a pretty young age. I probably wasn't going to. And I just felt, came up with the idea. A family friend was um, had written a book and there were some pictures in it at the footy and um, he'd actually taken them as well. And it was simple as that. I saw the pictures yeah. and thought, right, that'll do me. I'll, um, I'll get on the sidelines of the footy and, Worked at it through my teens and, you know, got the camera and, um, you know, worked pretty hard at school on it and then a bit of work experience and, um, yeah, landed a job in the dark room of the Adelaide News way back. Oh, so loading, <laughs> we loading talked, roles, black and white film. Yeah, we, we talked a bit about um, the early stages of your career and, and you kind of were taken a little bit on board uh, like in a mentorship role. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how that sort of came about? Yeah, I was pretty lucky with the group of guys that um, I started out at the news. Like some of them were, you know, at retirement age and I was mm. a 17-year-old kid that, that, that came in there. Um, Ray Titus was the sports photographer yep. um, who, who did all the footy. So I kind of... Mm. Uh, Got nicknamed Shadow for a while there as I kept sort of hanging around and following Ray everywhere. And there was no guarantees once you landed the job as a copy person, your job was to sort of mix the chemicals and yeah, bolt, sure. bolt the rolls of film and, and stuff and, you know, get a fair few lunches and feed a fair few parking meters for <laughs> photographers and stuff. So grab, grab the uh, coffee. There's no guarantee, but, you know, if you yeah. showed a bit of enthusiasm and are willing to learn, um, you know, you were on the right track and, um, you know, I would, I would do, do my shift and mm. then I would go out with the, whoever the photographer was on night shift or afternoon shift yeah. and learn from him. And then I'd also turn up on the weekends as well. And, um, yeah, just pretty much was yeah, doing it seven days a week, I reckon, as a <laughs> young kid. And was he juggling school at this stage? What sort of, what sort of timeline are we looking at? Yeah, I left school and went straight. I landed the job at the end of finishing year 12 of high school. Jeez, that's, that's epic. And, yeah. and sort of the things you were shooting early, obviously a passionate um, Aussie rules supporter yourself. Um, I'm, I'm finding out a little bit. But Adelaide boy, obviously footy crazy town as well. Yeah, it certainly was. So that's what you kind mm. of... Uh, started with sport but yep. you know there were no sport was a hard thing to get into um mm. so you had to earn your stripes and um basically you, you had to learn 
uh, what working for a newspaper is all about and yeah. learn something called news sense and to know what, what is news and what, what is a news picture. Um, yep. And, you know, the, the things that I learned early in those days mm. uh, are things that I still carry with me today. Amazing. And obviously we talked a little bit about Ray, but um, was there anything Ray initially said that, that you've still been able to carry through photography? I think going back again, it's the new sense. His new sense was incredible. Mm. He knew yeah. what the news picture was and he kind of knew how to get it. And that, that was instilled in me and I learned a lot of that. He was also, yeah. he was wonderful with how he um, worked with the athletes and, and got to know the, you know, the superstars of Australian cricket or whoever. Mm. And, um, I kind of watched and, you know, a lot of the photographers all had their, um, their own special skills, whether it was a mm. technical side or somebody yep. had the gift of the gab. Somebody yep. was great working with people. And so I guess I kind of picked a little piece out of everybody and, mm. um, and learned, learned from that, really. I mean, yep. I, I, I had no idea what I was doing when I started. And I still don't mm. a lot of the time. But, um, yeah, you, I, I learned a lot from those guys. And like I said, what I learned in those early years has stuck with me. And I, I take it on to most jobs I go on. Yeah. Absolutely. And obviously for those who don't know, the there's quite been quite a dramatic transition in the in the late nineties from a lot of people going from digital sorry, from film to digital. Um now we sort of spoke a little bit about that in our pre interview, but basically describe a typical day in a film photographer's life at at a at a game of cricket. Because I think that's pretty amazing. Well, we all sat with a bum bag around our waist, which was full of film to start with, uh, and that had two pockets in it and one with yep. um, film ready to go and you'd whack that through and rip the leader off and tuck it in the other pocket. So, And you'd <laughs> often lick it and scratch it and mark on it what it was, whether you had to push yep. that film, plus one or, or whatever, for certain things. Um, so, yeah, my first cricket tour was all film. The whole thing was film. I started in Amazing. black and white, would you believe, black and white film that we uh, developed and printed black and white prints. Um, but then yep. we transitioned to colour in the early 90s. Yep. Uh, and, and, yeah, by the sort of late 90s doing cricket tours uh, with film where we would just send the film back to the office and somebody else would clack your eggs and, yeah. and write your captions down on a little piece of paper and, and then you go back at the end of the day and, um, you know, select the ones you liked. Kind of thing. <laughs> so it was a, like a kind of bit of a case of you're not really sure what you've got, you know, which I, I think is hugely different to today's sort of era where you can you take, you know, a thousand, two thousand photos in a shooting and you kind of know you've got some good ones. Is that is there do you have that sense in film photography where you can still be like that's that that was a good shot and you kind of know it? You have that um moment that's frozen in your head particularly for mm. a high sports picture where and, and you still have that feeling today when you mm. nail something um it's just now i can flick through and look at it but back then yeah, you sure. had that anticipation and excitement you couldn't wait for the film to come out of the machine yeah and, and i remember the film coming out of the machine and you'd be you know you'd get to you could you, you thought you'd shot it about frame 25 or something and you'd be waiting <laughs> for it to come out to, to get a loop on it see if it was sharp and and you got that picture so um yeah, the yeah, element of surprise with film is is a wonderful thing the black and yeah, white stuff sure. I got in india i took myself off there um on a trip myself yep. and just shot um a whole heap of black and white film you know 80 or 90 rolls or something like that and came home and you know didn't know anything what i had yeah. until we got back yeah. to the trip and then, yeah. you know spent a few weeks process it, developing them all and um yeah, yeah that the real exciting thing about photography is, um, you know, seeing it come to life, the neg and, and yep. the print also as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've seen those on your website of, of that India trip and they like, doesn't seem like something that would be easy to recreate uh, in today's digital era. There's just sort of something um, quite beautiful and subtle about all those images, which is 
you know really nice yeah and it's you know it was no no motor drive also so it, it was <laughs> um yeah photography in its most pure i think yeah um, absolutely and really, really teaching yourself about photography and yeah about composition and yep. um you know um because you know photography is it's it's a self-taught profession you can mm. look at other people's pictures and look at books and whatever but you know it's up to you and your eye to um to to learn and you, you keep learning it that's right and like from from an early age um in in your teens onwards it seems like you kind of had the attitude of if you, if you put the work in you're getting the result out of it it's not something you can just study in a in a book oh absolutely yeah you certainly had to work hard at it and i guess lucky mm. i found a profession that i'm passionate about that i was willing to put in those extra yards but you know i don't I don't know whether I have a fear of failure or, or something, but there was always a, um, you know, a determination to succeed and, um, and to, to get the picture. And that, that comes from the high pressure cooker of a, you know, working for major daily newspapers and mm. uh, importance of um, capturing those moments. Yeah. And, and doing it in a quite a quick turnaround time. We had, exactly. we had a bit of a chat. We had a bit of a chat about the, the probably the country roads you were travelling down to get back to the station to make sure the images were all sorted in a decent time. Yeah, once upon a time in the film days, we used to um, drive a little bit fast on the on the roads, particularly <laughs> if you're on night shift coming back from something on deadline. So, yeah, um, big, a bit crazy back then, to be honest. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't, well, obviously we we talked a little bit about it earlier, but. For, for, for scope of uh, Phil and his dedication. Um, I even took, brought up my old man um, who played SANFL back in the 80s uh, and Phil was able to identify just based off which number he is uh, wearing on his back. And and he, I, I told him his name and he said, oh, number 31. So just yep. goes to show the dedication to the sports that you have been shooting um, and the attention to detail um, that you show, which I think is really impressive. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a visual thing that some things just sort of stick in your, in your mind, I guess. Yeah. And, I, and I hope you your dad as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I was going to, I was going to say too, when, when did it start to, I guess, click for you that you could do a career out of this? Is, is it, was it early on you just thought if I, if I work hard at this or was there moments like, you know, starting to get on, on cricket teams and, and things like that. When, when did it sort of start to mesh for you? Uh, I think if I go back to school, I always had this belief somehow that I was going mm. to do it. I remember okay. you know, being my English teacher and, you know, um, yeah, and they, they always used to say you, you need to, you know, find some other things to do and whatever, but I was just determined to go down this photography path. Um, mm. And, yeah, like you said before, if you just keep keep working hard, um, things kind of just fell into place, I guess, and I, I kind mm. of kept doing that and I'm, I'm still doing that. So. And, and for those, I guess, that are maybe a little bit, little bit timid about doing sports photography or taking it to the next step what would you sort of encourage would be a good basis to to start from do you think going to local sports games um but also obviously there's an element of networking here as well what what would you say is is fundamental to to becoming a sports photographer well you know if if it's what you want to do then back yourself and and find a way to go and do it um, mm. and push and scratch and, you know, um, pester people and whatever. But obviously you need to, um, you, you need to get out there and shoot it and, and have mm. an understanding of the sport and a desire to keep on improving uh, yep. in your work. Yep. And before pre-game um, going, obviously it will depend on the sport, but pre-game research Obviously, that's something you take a bit of pride in from, from what I've heard you speak about. How, how do you go about doing something like that? It was obviously paying attention to the news in the lead up to a lot of the games or? 
Yeah, you definitely need to know the news and mm. keep on top of that. Um, you know, but things like the Olympics, which you don't, you know, was lucky to cover quite a few Olympics and yep. every four years and you would do sports that you actually wouldn't cover um, in between an Olympics. Mm. Um, but come Olympics, uh, the profile uh, goes up on that sport and, um, you know, you you would have to remind yourself, um, you know, familiarise yourself of how the, how the actual event is run for starters. Mm. So it was always a really challenging, um, certain things that you would do more and more like a swimming or athletics or whatever you would yeah. get used to it. But, you know, the other sports that you would duck out to do, you know, you're diving or whatever, you, you'd be trying to remember the process of, um, and, and that was something I probably wasn't uh, super good at. So it was, you know, it was yeah. quickly trying to, um, you know, learn as you go quickly. Yeah, for sure. And um we're going to cover it a little bit later in some with some photos but portraits sort of made their way into your photography and 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 kind of gave you like a special niche uh like quality to your images how did um how did you go about approaching athletes because that that can be quite an intimidating thing um but obviously early on was that something that you kind of made in it an importance as such or I probably used to avoid it, to be honest, mm. early. Not so much the portraits of the athletes because we always had to do that from a press yeah. conference to get a right. quick picture or whatever. We always had to do yep. that. But to start to do the more high-end and take lighting out on a job, which mm. we didn't do, um, that was very daunting to me and I didn't um, didn't have the confidence to do that. Mm. And, uh, and But... I guess I slowly started at it and yeah, you know, nobody taught me how to do it. And I'd still do stuff that's incorrect all the time. I just wing it. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, it was something that I've developed and worked harder at and something I yep. really enjoy doing is, you know, profiling the athlete as well and, yeah. and showing off their physiques and yep. uh, their skills and, you know, having them in action in portraiture mm. and, um, you know, and also just recording, uh, you know, little bits of history, not just what happens on the field, but, but a study of that person. So, um, yeah, I've, I've always loved, um, I guess I've always seen it from the athlete's side, looking at it so mm. closely through the lens. Um, and I guess that's kind of helped me to, to build, you know, relations and, um, you know, I'm, I've, I've, always been intrigued by their careers um, and want to see their successes. Um, and, you know, every four years an Olympic comes around and it's pretty exciting to see, uh, you know, athletes get out and, and achieve their personal best and, uh, and and likewise in the footy and cricket and, and, and that as well. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Is, is there an element of, of like making them feel comfortable? Is that one of the, the I guess, the keys to, to getting them to open up a little bit because photography and capturing emotion is not something easy to do, especially um, if the subject might be, you know, a bit uneasy about getting their uh, photograph taken. Yes, yeah, definitely. You have to, um, you know, you have to try and um, put them at ease and, and just um, win their trust. Mm. Um, if you don't know the athlete, I, I kind of just act like I do know, know them, I guess. And, <laughs> You know, LA Dodgers came out from the US and, yep. you know, I was pestering the, the media people there and uh, I guess they saw my enthusiasm. I, you know, people, the media disappeared and I stayed for hours till the very end of the day and um, I guess, you know, sometimes people might see your dedication and yeah. enthusiasm and, um, you know, or they just come out and do a quick picture to, so you can finally bugger off. But, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, just uh, halfway through, um, and I just thought I'd like to mention, if anyone's got any uh, questions for Phil, please shoot them through. We'll try and get to them best we can. Uh, obviously, there's a wealth of insight here and experience. So if anyone has any direct questions um, on sports photography, portrait photography, and they just wanted to ask Phil something, please feel, uh, feel free to shoot them through, and we'll try and get to them as as 
as as we go along. Um, now, Phil, Canon Australia, um, how did you come about with your, I guess, your partnership and working within Canon? When was your first Canon camera and how did that sort of come about? Uh, it was probably the mid-90s. Mm-hmm. Started, we made the switch to Canon and, yep. you know, the autofocus was... Um, was probably what got people to, to go to Canon and, you know, we've stuck with them ever since because mm. it's producing good cameras, great cameras. And, um, you know, I trust their products and, um, you know, they, they don't let me down. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And obviously um, being a, a, a working photojournalist, sports uh journalist um does something like cps um can in professional services come in play do you hire your gear or is that mostly own stuff that you use uh always have your, your own kit um yep. but there are certain things to to borrow from time to time but also mm. you know the support there i'm not the most sort of technical base photographer a new camera ca- comes out and you know I, I don't really read manuals of cameras and my job is to try and find the picture and um, you know, probably um, a lot of the camera might go to waste with um, I could use more of it. Um, <laughs> but I've always felt, you know, the hard part about photography is actually finding the picture. And I, I do find that the, um, you know, the, the amateur tends to over-focus on the technical side of mm. photography rather than just um, really focus on uh, you know, what's, what you're looking at in, in that yeah. viewfinder. For sure, yeah. and we and we did, did we did kind of touch on it as well uh, earlier on. Um, we spoke. It's not about being the most technical photographer, um, and you mentioned it to me. Like sometimes there's there's situations where you will get the shutter speed wrong, you will get the aperture wrong, but being in the right moment at the right time is yeah. more integral to the photography. Yeah. Would you yeah. you you would agree with that? Up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've mm. got to just. You've got to just shoot it. If, if you see it, you you shoot it and you think, oh, I wish I'd you know, shot that with a lot more mm. depth or something. Um, but, you know, there's, there's pictures there that would probably be sitting on my website that, you know, technically I should have shot it differently, but mm-hmm. I got the image. So Yeah, and that's the important thing. And I guess um, another question I guess we'll ask as well, you started to transition across a little bit to the mirrorless side of things now. So you've gone over to the R3. How do you find that experience now compared to what you've had previously? Yeah, look, it's good. It's uh, I'm, I'm it's a it's in in the process of me learning um, more about it. I think it's a mm-hmm. fantastic camera. Um, you know, to, to drop thirty frames a second at sport and shoot at night at sixty four hundred ISO and mm-hmm. you know, look like it's. 400 ISO or something. It's um, it's it's pretty amazing compared to to where we started in, in the yep. digital space. Um, yep. So yeah, I'm enjoying the yeah, and it's something new too to to um, you know, help you see differently. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying uh, enjoying it. Great. And if you could break down a couple of the basics on. For people at home that are watching that want to do a bit more sports photography, um, obviously there's a couple of tips and tricks to the trade. I guess some of the main things that that a lot of people might be asking is position um, and and positioning in the in the AFL. So the AFL games that you go to, do you get much choice there in where you can position? Uh, Well, you do, but um, you know the 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 you know, but you you will always try and find sort of good, clean backgrounds in sports mm. photography. Okay. Um, but, and then you also have to, you know, even if you're out photographing a club rugby game, for example, you're not going to run up and down the whole time. So t- sometimes, yeah. you know, it's about um, having a hunch in sports photography of where mm. you think uh that team might be going, whether that team's the more attacking team and, um, you know, trying to predict where the action might come. Mm. But then also keeping an open mind and be totally ready for that unexpected freak thing that often happens in, in sport. And, yeah. um, 
to try and capture it. Like a, you know, a test cricket match that's looking like a draw on day five and all before you know it, it becomes one of the greatest cricket matches in history and it goes right down to the wire and you're on the edge of your seat and it's half past six on a Sunday night on day five. And Yeah, your, your Michael Clark uh, image uh, speaks to me a little bit in relation to that as well. Yeah, well, that test was uh, at the SCG was just an incredible test and it, it looked like it was gone and three wickets yeah. went over. And, you know, you know everybody's sitting at home watching it on TV and, um, you know, it's important you don't panic in those situations. Yeah. And, yeah, look, there's a lot of inner panic that goes on. There's a lot of stress that goes through a sports photographer and it's probably why a lot of us are pro sports shooters are, are mm. really good mates because we're probably the only ones who understand each other and what um, what battles you go through to the pressure of, of getting the moments and the things that, you know, can go against you. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, for something like the SCG game, you're probably, you're probably sitting there thinking, you know, there's a million other places you'd probably rather be at some points, right? Uh, not for me, probably. <laughs> um, I, I'm happy in that space. Um, yeah, I for, love for the for the norm for the normal human, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> four, uh, forty uh, degrees several days in a row. Temperature is um, <laughs> wears a bit thin. Yeah, for sure, for sure. No, that's cool. Now, I I have um, in a couple of the interviews that I've seen, um, read that you've done, uh, reading the game is something that you mention a little bit. Do you want to tell us a bit, little bit about that? You kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but. Like is is it is it a, is it a feeling? Is it a sense? How how do you how do you, how does someone read the game? Um, we I, I don't know what what it, how how you do it, but you mm. um you just immerse yourself in the event that's going on in front of you. You're not you know mucking around and not concentrating. You are you are watching everything from um I don't know. You just you just in the zone of concentrating mm. on that event um, yep. unfolding. And, um, yeah, I, I think if you go back to Tedesco scoring that try in the state of origin, yep. you know, I, I was lucky. I got lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but something just tells you in your your head what happens is, um, you know, to, to linger down that end because the potential of the big picture happening there is – is greater than the team that's already in front. So, yeah. um, you know, there were a lot of good pictures early in that night, but they all mean nothing. I'm so, not, I'm, you know, I'm, whatever you've got means absolutely nothing until that final moment actually happens. I might um, even share. I might even share um, while we're talking about that. I might even share a couple of images. Yeah. I'll just d double check. Yeah, that we can see in that perfect. So that's. So this is the Tedesco try. I don't know if you can you can see this okay, Phil? Yeah. Yep, perfect. So this is kind of the finished product. You've got a defeated Queensland player. You've got celebrating New South Wales players. You've got the emotion. You've got the drama. You've got the lights. But behind this photo is... Let's see if I can get it. No, it won't let me do it. Let me select all. Yeah, yeah, while you're doing that, I guess talking about it, it's you know it's the go. pressure of the occasion. There's mm. eighty thousand people in the stand, you know, incredible amount of TV audience, um, and we you know we would run the sidelines and um, and you know you're not sitting there in that spot getting it. Your job is to move up and down, and yeah, look, I got really lucky that night, but. Mm. Um, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't call it luck. If you look at the video on your uh, on your website, there's a bit of sprinting involved there. I don't know if that's so lucky. Yeah. Well, I think I think if you see the play, they one of the passes went slightly behind, maybe which slowed his momentum, which gave me enough time to to get in front. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have got there in time. And there's look, there's been plenty of times over the years that you don't yeah. get there and get that, but. To, to get there on such a big occasion. Um, I've, just got, and, I've just got your photo up here, obviously, 
this is a bit of a behind the scenes photo as such, but what are you carrying in your left hand here? That's a what a one DX plus a yeah, it's a four hundred two eight, <laughs> and then a twenty four to seventy on the other camera, which bounces around on your shoulder running down. But you know, I <laughs> I guess if you saw the vision running on, you know, my finger doesn't leave the shutter; it's, yeah. it's ready. Um, yeah. To pick it up one handed and shoot. And, you know, that's the moment he's gone in for the try. But then the euphoria after that one, you know, that was only 30 seconds to go in that game. Yeah. And, um, yeah, to get those moments yeah. all one handed because I didn't have time to drop the other lens. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's very epic. Very epic. And I guess the other question is how do, how do you stay throughout the game? glued in is there is there a secret to that or is it more so that you just feel yourself so immersed in it that it's just becoming instinctual um yeah it is it, it is an instinct thing like i said you can yeah. try and predict and anticipate what's going to happen and sometimes yep. that does work you know it does work for any of the sports like if i think about buddy's 1000 goal like i, mm. I felt like he was going to get it that night i just yep you know, because I'm watching it so closely. And that picture you've got up on the screen now of Michael O'Loughlin um, against the West Coast Eagles at a final in Perth in 2006. They got up by a point, I think, and yep. Mick got in the face of the fans. And I was watching him that night because he was on. He was playing the first quarter. He got up and yeah. celebrated right with the fans. And yep. so it was, he was something that I was really aware of. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, that, that made a great image. Absolutely epic. And, and yeah, just touching on, on Buddy's uh, 1000 as well. Um, I think it was about four, three or four behind that night. And the weeks prior, I guess he, he had, he'd been a bit in, inaccurate. And I think he'd only get one or one or two in the lead up. So he wasn't particularly, I guess, in form at that stage. And, Obviously, goes to show that you know if you've if you've got that hunch, you've got that feeling, you position yourself in the right situation to achieve the photo. I think that's that's that that's outside of photography, right? That's, that's yeah. I mean, it, it's just else. Felt, it just felt right that it was going to mm. happen. His family was in town; they were only in town for those first two games. Yep. Um, and so I, I knew he would have wanted to get it done that night as well. And, yep. Yep. Um, and once he uh, once he gets on a roll and gets going and gets absolutely pumped, um, it's a, he's a hard yeah, man to stop. He, he is, and um, yep. yeah, that was just an epic. Um, the picture there you had on the left of Dustin Martin. Um, there we go. Yeah, and this and this commiserations to me. I think this is the Adelaide Grand Final here, possibly. It, it is. Indeed, but it was a 37-year drought for the Tigers. Um, superstar of their club, Norm Smith medalist. My eye does not go off him during the lap of honour afterwards because yeah. he's going to be a big picture of the day. For sure. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, so you've got there's so much going on. You've got to, to keep on top of um, all of that, but then you know your eye doesn't go off of him and yep. you know that's only a split second he actually got up there and did that mm. um so it was a yeah i was pretty happy with that that's image a, that's an epic Absolutely photo and i know that faithful. i know that went pretty i'm pretty sure that was one of the viral images for the last you know five to ten years in australian um rules photography so i think that's an, an absolute epic image probably up there with um Jack Rewalt celebrating with the killers, but that's a it's a very good image. It's a very how good? good how oh, no, how yeah, good? Um, Adam Adam Goods here. So these these are more so a, a back into your portrait sort of realm as well. So this shows a little bit of what you can do portrait wise. Yeah, it was a special um, special one to shoot. Um, mm. It was the twenty year anniversary of of uh, Nicky Winmar's stance against yep. racism. And, um, Goodsey uh, reenacted that moment um, mm. ahead of the Sir Doug Nichols round of the AFL. And um, yep. it was, 
he was actually, they were in team meetings and they were quite late. I kept getting the messages saying, sorry, they're going to be a bit late. And I said, look, just mm. be as late as he wants because I wanted that sun off the ground. Um, yeah, right. On the other side of the ground. I like to work in the shadow. Um, yep. I can work in shade, then my lighting will uh, have more effect and um, I can let my lights do the work. So uh, we, when Goodsy did come out for this, I, I tried to do it exactly like it with a long lens and mm. it didn't work. Had all my lights there and um, we just kept moving further across across the field and Goodsy was helping me carry my lights and, you yeah. know, the composition to get that sun in the position, I would get there and set up and, the sun wouldn't quite be there. So yeah. we'd have to pick them up and move again. And it was Goodsy's idea. He said, mate, why don't we just go to the end and wait? So we just went to the end and waited until that sun got into the right position and um, executed that picture. And um, Yeah, it was, it's one that I'm pretty proud of. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is probably one that you can show the player afterwards and, and they'd feel part of the moment as well. And it's a hugely important photograph um, and being what it represents, what it means as well. So it's just it's just one of those ones that I, I think you would have to be like a pinch yourself type moment, just surreal. Yeah, it is. It's um, yeah, the, the portraits when you execute them and they work well uh, are mm. as satisfying as the big moments at the big yeah. events as well for me because you know none of them are going to happen again. So yeah. you've um, you've captured a, a moment. Um, mm. and yeah, it's um, I, I'd love yeah. that feeling of uh, time and, capsule. And also relief. I put so much pressure on myself at, at, yeah. um, at trying to achieve it. Um, I can I can I can only it. imagine as as someone who does photography myself, just like the lead up to it. That you know can still obviously you still get nervous before you shoot. Yeah, for sure. It's the worst mm. part of what we do because you know, sometimes your shoots are only a couple of minutes long. Yep. But there's hours of waiting and looking mm. at the weather, watching mm. the wind up and, you it's know, it's all, that, that's why, you know, we can we can be sort of grumpy buggers photographers. And, um, uh, but, yeah, it's, a, it's such a wonderful relief when, uh, when things go to plan or, or when they, you know, they turn out better than you'd planned, which often happens on, um, you know, uh, you know, you put the work in and sometimes yeah. things turn out even better than you'd hope. So, Well, I think with a little bit of photography, I don't know about if you're the same, but you get like a, a bit like, oh, you know, it's not going to turn out too well. And then you kind of lower the bar. Is that, is that something you do as well? Um, sometimes. Are you, are you, are you're giving yourself all the confidence in the world. Yeah, no, I look, I seriously, I'm, I'm a bit of a stress head when I'm shooting and um, I kind of wing it and, you know, my test frames might not be working out too well and mm. I'll, I'll borrow anybody I can to help me with those, stand in the shot and uh, and then the athlete turns up and somehow you just go into like a little, I don't know, autopilot mode or mm. something and you just wing it. Oh, I often I don't even know what I'm doing with settings and whatever. It's, it's just an automatic thing that um, you are adjusting to and you're, you're working so quickly. Your mind is working yeah, so quickly. Overdrive. Prove what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so, and, and just quickly, we're going to, we're going to um, grab some audience questions, uh, Phil, uh, but just if you want to run through some of these images, um, because they were quite important to you and this is how you sort of came about, I guess, um, in a little ways because we spoke about this earlier. This is something that you kind of did off the cusp a little bit. Yeah, I think, I mean, most of my pictures there, no one's really ever asked me to do them. I've, mm. I've, I've just gone out and, and done them. I, I felt that that was my job as a, as a photographer was to provide mm. and not wait for, be told to, you know, there were photographers that you would work with that would just... Mm do what they're told and come back with a good picture. But I, I like to work independently and um, yep. and produce and produce with a bit of element of surprise as well. Mm. Um, if you can, um, you can surprise your editors and, and stuff with images, they're, uh, they're going to get displayed a lot better. Um, 
and yeah, I guess the cricket portraits um, started with with Steve Waugh, um, and you know each year when there's new captains, mm. um, you know I try to uh, get a classic type type portrait of them. Um, yeah. That one of Michael Clark, um, that I'd spent hours and hours looking at that spot and the SCG mm. members, and mm. it's pretty awful lighting in there and you know the color of the walls is a bit yeah old-fashioned and so I'd, I just spent a couple of hours in there trying to work out what i was going to do and you know i placed all sorts of lights one shining up the stairs and mm. another one on the stairs that that threw the through the rails of the stairs which threw the shadow across the floor and um that was shot on um 8 a.m news day which most of my shoots were mm. uh, which were so meant sort of getting there at like 6 a.m. New Year's Day. And sure. that Michael Clark one, where I was actually living in a place uh, where I had a view of Sydney at the time. And mm. the last guest didn't leave our house till about quarter to four <laughs> in the morning. And uh, so I was a little bit scratchy heading into that shoot, but luckily oh, I, wow. I pre planned it and had the six. You pulled it together. <laughs> um, and then. You were telling me a little bit earlier as well. Um, it's gotten to the stage where, you know, you've you've got cricketing captains wanting to to keep going with the trend um, tradition of, of doing these sort of portraits, which is pretty special. Yeah, well, it was great to shoot um, Pat at the Sydney Test this year. Um, mm. uh, once he was given the captaincy in his first home Test as captain and. Um, you know, pitched the idea and, and Pat was more than obliging and, you know, really wanted to uh, be a part of it. And, mm. uh, you know, I think he was, you know, he's a wonderful bloke and terrific to work with. Um, and, you know, I think he was pretty happy with uh, with the result that we got. Yeah, absolutely. Epic. Um, now, we're just going to go into the audience questions now. So let me pull up my screen. Wherever it is. One second. There we go. All right. So, Phil, did you want to uh, bring up some questions, Phil? Like, um, um, Phil, not Phil Hilliard, Phil Joshua. Yep. He's going to pick some for us. All right. Perfect. Split second to get this shot. Are you manual or semi manual settings? What type of focus area? These are a bit technical, but. Let's have, yeah. see how you go. Uh, I've always shot full manual with mm -hmm. everything. Yep. However, starting to, for example, footy at the SCG, AFL, mm. afternoon light, and you've got sun up one end of the ground, backlit at the other, it becomes tricky to switch. So yep. I've started trying to use auto ISO, and I've found yep. on the R3 that that's, uh, that's working awesome. Working um, three. So, yeah, I'll just shoot, you know, 2004. Always shoot wide open at sport. Um, yep. To, yeah, I just like to get rid of the backgrounds as much as you can. And, um, you know, particularly at cricket, if you're um, really bright sunlight, I'm not, not shooting cricket at F11 because I don't want those cricketers blending into the crowd. So I'm, I'm shooting it at F4. So mm. even if that's eight thousands of a second or whatever at 200 ISO, that, that's what I'm shooting at. Yeah, um, the, awesome. The other part was the um, focus area. The focus area. Uh, mm, so are you using single point? Are you using yeah. uh, an incorporation? Generally a, single, generally a single point. Yeah. Or sometimes maybe slightly expanded. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, Rumi's uh, got a question. Is that shot with a speed light or natural stadium lights? Now, I assume... I think he might have been talking about the Adam Goods photo, but there would have been a. It looks like a little bit off to the side with speed light. Do you want to talk us through, like a typical shoot like that? What sort of speed lights are you using, and and, yeah, and how are you not, I, I use um, wrong color Cirrus lights, yep. mm -hmm. uh, and there, I uh, that wouldn't have been because it was a bit earlier, ten years ago. Mm. Um, Eight hundred watt lights, and yep. Me to be able to shoot the power that I like to shoot, I like to underexpose everything. I tend not to take any lot of notice of the natural light out there. I'll tend to just mm -hmm. 
um, expose how I want it to look and then yep. let my light do the work. So I'm often shooting at full power with a shaper on it, um, yep. which is pretty close to the subject. Um, yeah, so nice. yeah, yeah, went back through a few of my portraits. You'd, you'd see that. Um, yeah, it's sometimes we do three lights for, for some things, um, yep. which, you know, on my site, the LA Dodgers one, that's what that was with, was just very simple mm. with, with two Canon speed lights and I shot seven frames. That was it on that picture. Yeah, and wow. That was the time, so. Jeez. And um, a typical day shooting, What? how many images are we talking here and, and, and how do you go about processing them? Because that's obviously would be quite a big workflow that you have to go through. Well, certainly a lot more now once we start mm. using the at 30 frames a second there's there's a hell of a lot more that um is is coming into your uh computer yeah um so yeah the edit is is uh is a really um it's a tough thing mm. doing your own which i've always done my own own edit you know at all yep. the olympics and, and wherever yep. um but it's also it's also part of the fun of it too is that that pressure of um you know, getting it, getting it out. Yeah, for sure. Um, perfect. Well, I, I hate to wrap it up because there's a wealth of knowledge here and, and photography that I could show. Do you have any favorite sporting moments and sporting images that, that will still resonate, you know, 20, 30 years from now? What's, what's, what's some of the, the big ones that you remember? Um, look, I guess recently, uh, mm. To mine was the buddies 1000 night was just epic it was yeah um what my view where i managed to get myself into that position um you know there's another 35 six players on the field that could be in my way yeah. so the stress of that and what as he was walking in one player walked across in front and had he have stopped there i was gone for the night and yep. uh, he kept walking so i had this clean clean vision and to see nice. the fans on the field as Lance was walking in, they would walk. He started running. They started running. He kicked this yeah. and they were running. And that uh, that's one of the greatest things I've ever seen actually unfold uh, in the lens. Um, I think, you know, some of the great cricket matches and test matches. I was lucky to cover the 05 Ashes series in England, um, which just went down to the wire and, you know, they're, they're pretty special to me and, you know, traveling with that era of Australian cricket was, uh, you know, it was pretty lucky. They're, they're good people. Um, yeah. Someone asked favorite image and why. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't quite have a favorite image. If I went back, mm. I'd probably be able to pick out a handful. But for me, always my favorite image is what I've just achieved, whether yeah. that's um, something recent in a sporting event that, was good or whether it's a portrait that I've worked mm. hard and I've executed it and it's worked really well, you know, for a couple of weeks, that might be my favorite picture because it's, it's, it's current and I guess it keeps me fresh and striving for, for some more, but yeah, there's a few that in there that would probably stand out that Michael O'Loughlin one before um, yep. some of my portraits, Tim Kale mm. soccer um, when he yep. jumped and stood on the fence in front of me and um, yeah, just, uh, what you had to do to achieve to get that picture. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's a few yeah. things that, that awesome. stand out. Um, I'm going to go to the last question. I was just going to quickly ask one more. Um, your, you've got a video releasing tomorrow. Obviously, don't want to touch too much on it, but that will be exciting as well. Um, another great video that I think is worth checking out is the one that you went and did some school rugby um photography for i actually think that's a really good uh video for people to at home to check out as well um which we'll include in the links too um which is it's really good um i guess the last question from angus here um are there any sports moments that you wish you were there to capture um anything stand out uh probably you can't miss what you're not at though so mm -hmm. um i yeah, I probably I would have liked to have done the 2007 Cricket World Cup, but yep. I didn't get to do that one. But mm. I, I don't know, not really. Um, 
yeah, look, you see things on TV and think, oh, that'd be epic to be there. That would be amazing. But mm. on the other hand, there's all that stress that you would have if you were there trying to capture it. So sometimes it is nice to sit back and watch it on TV. And when you're doing your turn and, and at your event, um, you know, it's your turn to be in the hot seat and um, and have the pressure. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure on that one. You got to let someone else have the chance, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, Phil. Well, I'll let you get home to the kids um, and I'm sure you don't get enough of that time. So I really appreciate you joining us um, tonight and it's been, it's been special. No worries. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on and good, good to talk with you. Absolutely. Can't good. wait to see that video tomorrow too. that to be exciting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on just me at work at the footy um, with the AFL and the Swans and yep. um, hopefully it just shows a little bit of... Uh, you know, passion and energy around what we do. Yeah. No, I think you. Uh, I think you've you've absolutely nailed it. I think you're a, one of those real photographers who, who who lives and breathes photography and sports. I think it's very special. Yeah. Well, I'm not not sure what else I'd do. So I'm, I'm pretty addicted <laughs> right. to this one. This yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thanks for joining us tonight. No worries. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Jackson. Now, uh, just. Just a note, we do have another um, on the couch coming up very shortly. Uh, on the 23rd of August, we have Andy Taylor, who's a cinematographer. So something a little bit different, which we're excited about. So that will come up again on the 23rd. Don't remember to, don't forget, sorry, to hit like and sub subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the latest and what Camera Pro is doing. Camera Pro AU, we are on Instagram as well. Um, tonight it's been a real treat so I hope you um, all at home enjoyed it um, if there's anything you would like to, to contact Phil about please let us know and we'll try and get in touch with any questions that weren't answered tonight thanks again <laughs>